Hey folks, Dave here, and across the street at the moment, a Great Dane, big dog, just went into the dog park. A boxer and a German Shepherd are currently trying to make friends with it, while a little tiny Pomeranian puffball is trying to front on the three of them, and it's just a hilarious image. It Big dogs are wonderful, little dogs are very confusing. Anyway, irregardless, ir that's not the proper term. This is the CRKT Bombastic. It's that company making that knife by that producer. Producer, designer, it's, we're off to a weird start. This is how big it is. This is a CRKT Bombastic being compared against the Ontario Rat number one and number two. Bombastic against the Spyderco Endura and Deli Delica. My brain wanted to say Dragonfly for some reason, but Delica, it's never happened before. The Bombastic between the, this has been a weird day for me with words, Spyderco PM2 and the pair of three. And finally, the Benchmade Griptilian and Mini Grip. Now, of course, this thing looks weird. It is very unlike any other knife that I am familiar with, and some of those are for gold reasons, and some of them are for garbage reasons, and we now, today, in the next 15 minutes, are going to determine which is which. I'm doing a bunch of weird lead-ins today for some reason, but the truth is that Bombastic is one, the truth is that Bombastic is another one of a CRKT trend of being great with names. Uh, the Outrage, I think, was the last CRKT that I did, and it had a great name, but didn't really fit the knife. This, being bombastic, I think fits the knife perfectly. And it's because the knife is just cool. There are very few other knives that look quite like this. It's got the guard, it's got the bolstering thing. I think it's just called a bolster. It's got the big old star pivot that looks like this very real and true World War II relic that we recently dug out of the ice. That's real life. That's a thing that happened, and the star there reminds me of it. It makes it look, the the styling idea, what Ken Onion was going for, designed by Ken Onion, by the way, what Ken Onion was going for was kind of a World War II-inspired knife. Yeah, you got the little boot knife, you got the little swedge, you got the big star, you got the old tiny bolster. I think he nailed it. I think Bombastic fits that ideal perfectly. While we're talking about the pivot, it actually works. Fantastic. You see that little circle there? What that means is that this is the KVT ball bearing system. So there are a bunch of little balls in here that make it go whoosh. A little bit better than it would if it were on washers. Not really part of the World War II aesthetic, but neither is a bolster lock, so we're all good there. The point is that it's very difficult to miss a flip. As jimped up, and usually I'm not a fan of it, but this isn't as deep and sharp and aggressive as, say, on the SOG CLXR. As jimped as this is on every possible side, by the way, which that part's weird. As jumped as it is, it catches your finger, it throws it perfectly. This really is a fairly fidgetable knife. And once open, this blade truly is beautiful. It looks like just a straight drop point, but it's got a little bit of a swedge up here. It's 90 degrees, so if this is for whatever reason your go-to hunting knife, you'll be able to throw sparks with it fairly well. It comes right, right down to a beautiful tip. It's ground off center, but it's a budget CRKT, so that's what we're working with. A fairly thin blade stock, nice high flat grind. This blade is wonderfully done. That price, I've already referenced it, it's about $50, depending on where you look for it. And un under a $50 knife, there's a lot of Obviously, there are much higher quality, higher material knives available for $50, but there aren't going to be a lot of those that you're able to find in big box stores. This, I believe, I bought from Cabela's several years ago. And as far as, like, around the budget stuff, you're going to find CRKT, you're going to find Kershaw, you're going to find Gerber. And not, 
like Civivi is not going to be available at Cabela's anytime soon. So if that's kind of what you're working with, you're looking on the shelf at Walmart and Dick's Sporting Goods, CRKT, it's going to be one of it's going to be one of your value leaders. Again, not in the actual knife market, but as far as big box store knife brands, if you're getting it out of a clamshell pack, this isn't terrible. This isn't terrible value, uh, especially with the with the action on a fifty dollar knife. It's not terrible, not where it should be, but not awful. It's a fairly thin line that I'm trying to tread there. Choil, very well done. Not even a hint of a beard, maybe a slight hint, but not very much of a beard. Plunge grind meets it, fantastic. I like a good sharpening choil. The variety available, I'm showing the black blade over here, is definitely present, I guess. You have either the satin version or the black bladed version. I believe the black bladed version is the one that comes with the semi serrated as well. Black Blade, I believe, has been discontinued, but I'm not entirely sure how long this will be. This will remain available either. I don't know why I just expect certain things to be discontinued. It hasn't, for clarity, and I don't know if that one has either. There's a little bit of variety. Not very much, but there's a little bit. Especially when you're going for the, you know, old-timey military aesthetic, including the option of a Black Blade. You, you get you got ups for that one. I also appreciate that here on the lock bar you can see a little bit of a scalloping little cut out there as well as it sticking out proud of the show side liner as well as being a bolster lock which is essentially a frame lock but with a handle scale over it. The bolster is going to act as a lock bar stabilizer so you're not going to be able to spring the lock bar by pushing it too far that way and the scalloping that is present on both sides will let you get your thumb in there much easier. Again, increasing its fidgetability. Pocket clip, fear you not, we are coming back to this, but for the moment, really the only thing that you need to know is that it is deep carry, very, very deep carry. And finally, and one of the most charming things about this knife is actually something that I just figured out while writing up my notes. Notes are over there. But while writing up my notes, I was playing with it in different ways, realized something very important that I'm going to definitely harp on later. But, so, oh, nope. I learned that you can front flip this. With all of this jumping around the place, you can just grab it with your thumb. Ah, that's so cool. Making this, I think, my first front flipper. Ugh. There it is. Yeah, so that's cool. That's neat. Uh, obviously, it works great as a flipper. And uh, there's a third option, and I am going to spend time on that. Blade action name price. There's been a lot of gold here. And generally speaking, I believe that the gold outweighs the garbage. However... I guess as a spoiler alert, I usually don't say that till later. However, there is a significant amount of garbage here, and we need to talk about it. I've already addressed that this is a $50 CRKT, so you already know what that means. More than likely, it means 8CR, it means stainless steel, it means... I haven't noticed any, like, missed grind lines. Like I said, the is pretty well done. So QC does not seem to be an issue, but materials absolutely is. This is, again, one of those nines. Put, put this one in my Kershaw deadline list of this is this knife is the reason that CRKT needs to have a better quality brand. As far as CRKTs go, this thing is solid. However, this design is is good enough that it deserves to be made by a better brand, by a higher quality, higher end materials brand. At the very least, you put D2 and fix some of the other stuff and fix one of the other things that I'm gonna be talking about, solid, incredibly solid. I actually did lie about the QC stuff, it's just not something I particularly care about, but needs to be addressed. Whole bunch of spacing in here with the backspacer where there's not supposed to be space because the backspacer is taking up the space. It's difficult to see because it's black on black or whatever, but eh, right there, you can see along that edge. They, it does not fit together 100%. It's a budget CRKT. It's not really supposed to. But again, on a higher-end model, 
that is something that they would be able to address and fix. Holy screws, Batman! Why do you need six? Or four on that one, but why do you need six screws here? Like, two, maybe. Put one up there and one down here. The maximum would be four, but even that would be overkill and I would make fun of it. Why do you need six? And you can see the screws poking through in there. Adding more screws just adds to the risk of one of them going wrong. Or of you trying to disassemble it and losing it and screwing something up. And now you have an empty hole. There do not need to be six screws to hold this, to hold this uh, handle scale on. And it makes it look like... I don't know, like a droid mech, it makes it look so weird. I don't like the screws. I think they're dumb, and I think it's evidence of them not trusting their design, and just bleh. In soccer, if you have six defenders on the back line, it's either because you're super up and are parking the bus, or you have zero faith in your goalkeeper. And this feels very much closer to the second. And finally... We come to the one that everybody knew that I was going to address, and that is this big old platypus bill right here. Spoonfisher? What's the bird? That bird. This pocket clip makes me think of that bird. It is obviously one position, tip down only, which is bad enough. CRKT and Budget Kershaws do that sometimes, and that's bad, that's ugly, Ugh, that's garbage. What is more garbage here? is that you wasted a golden opportunity to give this thing an Emerson wave. Absolutely ridiculous. Absol oh, by the way, the screws are rounded and like big head rounded. So yeah, when you put your jeans in, that's gonna be screwing with the uh, ability to put it all the way in. But that is straight up garbage. Now, there is an argument for CRKT not procuring the patent for the Emerson Wave or the Wave function, although so many other people do versions of it that, I don't know, there's gotta, there's gotta be a way that CRKT can just do their own. But in any case, it's possible that they could not obtain the, obtain the patent for that. And so they put in clear ability to do so, and I don't know, we'll let the end users mod it in. But in that case, why is this the pocket clip that we went with? Because were that the case, and CRKT wanted to give customers the ability to wave it themselves, then these screws would have needed to be much closer together so that they could be bolted on down here. That's not the case. I hope I've explained my idea and what I'm frustrated about well enough because I'm very frustrated by it. And the worst part is that this wave super, super works. Video of me using it. It's awesome. You pull it out of your pants. The Emerson wave is my, the wave in general, under whatever brand it runs, is my very, very favorite opening mechanism. I believe that the Emerson wave provides the absolute best ability to open your knife in a timely manner. So seeing the ability for one here, seeing them come so very close to waving this thing, which I don't think CRKT has done, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe, please, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe that CRKT has a waveable model. This could have been the first one. This, in all its beautiful glory, could have been the first one, but instead they decided to go with this pocket clip. This knife is the most confusing thing in the world because it's legitimately, it is legitimately good. I believe that it is well made. I am glad CRKT has produced this. However, the biggest swing that CRKT could have taken to win my heart and they double downed on bunting. It's a great pocket clip. Give it flathead screws, flip it around, and this becomes one of my favorite knives ever. This, uh, this, this knife, you flip the pocket clip and this knife becomes the reason that I love and defend CRKT. 
Yeah, they swing and miss sometimes, but did you ever see the bombastic? That thing was awesome. But instead, this is what they go with. And for me, it will always remain a disappointment. What I most want out of CRKT, what I want that company to do. I'm glad the Provoke is smaller and cheaper now. I'm glad the field strip is even quicker now. But what I want from you is this knife blacked out D2 blade, flip the pocket clip. That's it. That's everything that I want out of Columbia River Knife and Tool. I will die a happy boy. But that's never gonna happen. The Bombastic 2, 2 Bombasti, unlikely to ever exist, so I sit here wallowing in my feelings while technically recommending that this knife be purchased. It's pretty good. My frustrations are powerful, but I understand them to be deeply personal issues. I hope this has been helpful or entertaining or something for you. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, let me know down below. And other than that, you have a great day.